Praise the Lord. Lord. Thank the Lord for being in the house of the Lord one more time. Thank you for safe travel and traveling mercy. Thank him for his grace. Amen. And won't be before you long tonight. Um, but I want to encourage you for a few moments in the word of the Lord. And um, the previous outline that we had is where I'll be coming from. Where there is unity, there is strength. And it's dated March or May the 1st, 2022. And I want to encourage you in the word of the Lord tonight that um, we have to fight the good fight of faith. And this is on section number three. And the Lord has been continuing to point my attention to this section. And as I get my my uh, scriptures lined up here, I want to give honor to not only the Lord, our, but our Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. I want to give honor to Bishop White. I want to give honor to uh, Elder Jones and our pastor, Pastor Harris. And I want to give honor to all of you. And... Uh, we need to f- help. We need help to fight this good fight of faith, according to our notes here on the outline. And as we are looking in the book of First Timothy six and twelve, is where the first scripture is coming from tonight. First Timothy six and twelve. Amen. And when you have it, please say Amen. First Timothy six and twelve. First Timothy 6 and 12. And the word of the Lord reads, and I'll read down into it actually. Uh, let me start, I believe, over in verse 6 and 6, chapter 6 and 6. And it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, Flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to pause here for a moment, um, because Paul here is encouraging Timothy, uh, young Timothy, to, uh, in a couple of things. And he started off in verse 6, and he wanted Timothy to, realize that there was a need to be content and it's not something that Paul was just uh, saying lightly or just you know saying in passing and even though sometimes you know I've learned over this last 20 something years in the Lord that sometimes the men of God and the women of God will say something in passing but it'll be just what you need in that moment in time for that particular uh, thing that the Lord would have you to have And it may not be over the pulpit, but it just could be in passing. And so I've been a part of many blessings and received great revelation and and, and great encouragement in those words in times of passing. But Paul thought it important enough to put this in his epistle to Timothy so that we could have this for our own selves in this for such a time as this. And, and he was encouraging Timothy that godliness with contentment is great gain because when we don't acknowledge that, that it is great gain, it deters us or dissuades us from fighting the good fight of faith. 
because our faith and our efforts are misplaced and, and we put trust in something that we can't carry out of this world. And so, um, and, and Paul began to encourage Timothy as to what happens when we don't have contentment and godliness. And he begins to explain how it, it takes men out, and I'm just paraphrasing right now, but it takes people away and it takes them out and it begins to take our affections and our emotions and our desires. And Paul even said in the scripture, it drowns men in destruction and perdition. And we may say, well, I don't have this, this love of money, this love of this, this love of that. But the Lord knows those things that come in and spoil the vine little bit by little bit. And he knows whatever it is that maybe we've been seeking for and asking for. Uh, uh, for a, 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 a while or not a long time at all. And he knows how they affect us over time. And then he broke it down. Paul broke it down and talks about the love of money. And we could fill in the blank for that. But most of the things that we desire that are in the natural do require money. They require money to even purchase them, to either purchase them or to upkeep them. But in some form or fashion, they are tied to some type of monetary value. And so when people look at this scripture, sometimes they begin to think within themselves that, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not covenanting after money. I'm not asking or, or desiring in every prayer, every chance I get, every thought I think is, is after or desiring money. But what is that thing or things that we could have so dear in our affections that's tied to the usage of money or the need to have money to get that thing. So maybe it's not the money directly, but whatever it is that is tied to that thing. Amen. Amen. And I never really thought about that when I began to re read this scripture over the years. I just really focus on the money piece. And so what the enemy will do is make you feel like, well, I'm good. I'm okay. I'm not worried about money because that's not my love. But what is that thing, that person, place, or thing that is tied? What is that noun that is tied to what Paul is talking about here tonight? The Bible says that we have to examine ourselves, whether we be in the faith. And that examination also depends, or is contingent upon us, not just being in the faith, but the things that would affect us in the faith. And the things that would take us out of the faith and that would cause us to lose our faith. Amen? Amen. And so Paul said in verse 10 that while some coveted, in other words, when they were coveting, when they were desiring, is what the reference says in H, those things began to cause an effect. Amen? Amen. And in the scripture in verse 10, it says they erred from the faith. And that's a result. They pierce themselves through with many sorrows. That's a result. There's a cause and effect of what, what happens when you have this love for the money and the things that are tied or attached to it. And, it's, and the thing about it is there's nothing wrong with having money but or, or the things that are attached to having money. But where are those things in our affections? Where do we place them in our emotions? Where do we place them in our desires? How do they impede us with this need to fight this good fight of faith? Amen? Mm -hmm. And it says here, but thou, O man of God. In other words, Paul's let us know that there is a way for those who love money, and this is the cause and effect for them, but then there's also a result for those that choose a different direction. Amen? And we are those that are choosing a different direction, a different way to go. We are not of them that draw back unto perdition, as it says over in Hebrews. Amen? Amen. But thou, O man of God, Paul began to say, but Timothy, this is what you are and what you should be and even what we should be and how we should go. But thou, O man of God, O woman of God, flee these things. In other words, the Bible talks about there being a way of escape that we should be able to bear it. And if we would flee these things, there is an effect. He said, follow after righteousness. That's how you flee these things. Godliness, that's how we flee these things. Faith, that's how we flee these things. Love, 
that's how we flee. Patience, that's how we flee. Meekness, that's how we how we flee. And I want to pause for a moment on these particular things as Paul gave instruction to Timothy. And his subheading says, charge to Timothy 10 commands. Because if we flee these things and substitute it for following after righteousness and godliness and faith and love and patience and meekness, that in turn gives us the ability to fight this good fight of faith. And then it turns around and gives us the same ability to lay hold on eternal life. Because we have been called. And Paul is saying to us tonight in the word of God, and we have professed a good profession before many witnesses. There's a lot to this fighting the good fight of faith. There's a lot to this having fleeing these things that Paul talked about in verse 10. There's a lot of benefits to doing what he says in verse 11. Not only do we follow after all of these things that Paul said in verse 11, but it gives us the strength to fight. Somebody say, I'm going to fight. It gives us the mind to fight. Say, I'm going to fight. It gives us the patience to fight. Say, I'm going to fight. It gives us the, the, the faith to fight. You got to have faith to fight. You got to have godliness to fight. You have to have patience to fight. You have to have meekness to fight. You have to follow after righteousness in order to fight. And he says, fight the good fight of faith. Not just think about it. Not just, well, I might get around to it. No, he said, fight. And when you look up the definition of fight, it's talking about armor. It's talking about Defending is talking about all kinds of things that you must do in order to fight. Fight is an action word that requires a movement. It requires something from the one who is the fighter. And so when he says fight the good fight of faith, we not only have to take that word just as, okay, fight the good fight of faith, but what am I doing to fight? And he gave us the answers in the previous verse. And so if we do all those things that he mentioned, it gives us the power, somebody say the power, power. to lay hold on eternal life. We have to have power to lay hold on eternal life. Yes. We have to have faith to lay hold on eternal life. Without the power and without the faith, it is impossible to lay hold on eternal life. We will fail to fight this good fight of faith. Amen. And on the outline, it says you may need help in your local church, jurisdiction, and organization. We need help to fight this good fight of faith. We need people to come in and run revivals. We need people to come in and build us up. We need to go see other people and other meetings and other churches and for forsaken not the assembling together of ourselves, as it says over in the, in the book of Hebrews. We have to do all these things that help us to lay hold on eternal life. It says on the outline, it's a spiritual battle. He said, be strong in the Lord as I turn to Ephesians, the sixth chapter in verse 10. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. In the verse 10, it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And the only way we can do that is with the instructions that Paul gave to Timothy, we can't be strong if we're coveting after money, if we're coveting after the things that are tied to the money. But we can be strong if we're coveting after righteousness. Somebody say amen. amen. We can be strong if we are coveting after godliness. If we are coveting after faith, what are we coveting tonight? What are we seeking tonight? What are we desiring tonight? Does that mean, no, I shouldn't want, uh, 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 um, you know, more income? No. If I want more income, that's fine. But what do I want it for? Yes, what do you want it for? It's not about what I want, but why I want. That's right. Yes, we can look at what I want. If it's godly, that's fine. If it is of, of righteousness, that's fine. If it's of faith, then that's fine. If it's of love, then that's fine. If it's of patience, it's wrought out of patience, that's fine. If it's wrought out of meekness, that's fine. That's fine. But why do I want it? How 
How do I want it? When do I want it? Where do I want it? For what reason do I want it? Amen? So he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In the power of his might. I want to encourage you tonight in the word of God. The 12 commands it talks about over in Ephesians, it says, be strong in the Lord is number one. Reference J. Be strong in his power. Put on the whole armor of God. Stand. Somebody say stand. stand. Have your loins girt about with the truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Instead of all these other things that Paul was referencing as it relates to coveting, coveting money and how many have erred from the faith, God always gives you a solution. He always gives us an alternative. We need help to fight this good fight of faith. He always gives us the help that we need to fight. He would be an unjust God if he did not give us what we needed to fight. But because he's so good and he's so righteous, he gives us just what we need to fight. For we wrestle not in verse 11, I'm sorry, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. This is how we're going to fight the good fight of faith. That ye may be able to stand, withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. I want to encourage you tonight. You cannot fight this battle by yourself. And I'm reading the Christian education outline at this time. It says you got to have help in your church and jurisdiction because of these strongholds. Strongholds keep people from coming to the house of God. Strongholds keep us from wanting to pray. Strongholds keep us from wanting to fast. Strongholds keep us from wanting to read and, and, and consecrate ourselves. Strongholds keep us down. Strongholds will try to make us sick in our body. Strongholds will try to keep us down in our mind. Strongholds will try to do all the things that it can do to distract us from serving the true and the living God. As I'm closing, it says one can chase a thousand and two can chase 10,000. This is in Deuteronomy 32 and 30. It says we need strong elders. Strong means you pray. You can pray in the spirit when you pray. We have a system of bishops and elders and pastors to help one another. We are helpers one to another. We need helps in the church. And I want to encourage you as you stand tonight. We need help to fight this good fight of faith. We are each other's help. I will say that again. We are each other's help. The Lord knows who to send. And when to send them. He knows why to send them. We may have thought that we were coming for, to Springfield. For somebody else. But the Lord could have sent us here for ourselves. And then he turns around and not only sent us for ourselves. But then he causes us to be a help for somebody else. The Lord knows those that are his. And he knows those that he has called. Those that are going to need his help. I want to encourage you tonight. Iron sharpers iron. And the Lord sent you here to sharpen each other. The Lord puts us in the position to sharpen each other. And while we're being sharpened, we can sharpen somebody else. We need help to fight this good fight of faith. I want to encourage you tonight. Keep fighting. Keep moving forward. Keep pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Because your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's all I have. I ask that you will stand tonight.